this problem, we have to find a lot of properties about the rational function. One of the most important things to know about rational functions, the x-intercepts are in the numerator, and the vertical asymptotes are in the denominator. So we got x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes. We're going to start with y-intercepts, though, because that's the first part of this problem. So how do we find y-intercepts? For any function, you take 0 and f it. So you let x equal 0. Remember, y-intercepts, you're on the y-axis when x is 0. That's when you're on the y-axis, which is exactly why we set x equal to 0. OK, all we're going to do now is f it. So here's our function. x appears in 4 places, so we have to make sure we put zeros in all four spots there. So we got 0 minus 0 plus 2. You could write five, negative 5 times 0, but it's going to be 0. Uh, denominator, we get another 0 minus 0 plus 3. So this is 2 thirds. All right, what we are looking at is the y value. It's the output. So as a point, and this question wanted the y-intercept as a point, if it doesn't ask about uh, being a point, you probably just give the y value. But as a point, x, y value, x was 0, y is 2 thirds. So that will go right here. And let's uncover that. OK, so we got the y-intercept. Next up, x-intercepts. And they're in the numerator. But let's say that you don't remember that. <clears throat> How do we find x-intercepts? Similar to y-intercepts, you're on the x-axis when your y is 0. That's when you're on your x-axis. So here we're setting y equal to 0. Of course, y is f of x. And our function right here, I'm going to copy that down. 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. Divided by 5x plus 2 divided by 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. And this is supposed to equal 0. OK, so a fraction equaling 0. When does a fraction equal 0? When the numerator is 0. So if you have a over b equals 0, this doesn't mean anything about b. b doesn't matter. a, so if this is happening, then a has to equal 0. Algebraically, if you multiply both sides by b, you'll get right over to here where a has to equal 0. OK, so we just want the numerator to equal 0. I could multiply both sides by the denominator to clear it out. And it'll cancel on the left. And on the right side, 0 times anything is 0. So you're going to be looking at 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 is 0. All right, this is a quadratic equation. There is three ways to solve quadratics. Uh, you always want to collect all the non-zero terms on one side and zero on the other. Uh, we could try to factor and get lucky. That's one option. Quadratic formula always works, but sometimes it's difficult to, the numbers get difficult, and you have to remember the quadratic formula correctly. There's a couple pluses and minuses and some squares that have to go in the right spot. The other option is complete the square. This is horrible for complete the square because we have a 3 in front of x squared and the x coefficient is not even. So it's not great for complete the square. Let's go ahead and try to factor and get lucky. I can't factor a 3 out of these terms, so hopefully it's going to be 3x times x. And I split it into 3x times x because 3 is prime. All right, 2 is also prime, so it's either 1 times 2 or 2 times 1. So let's try a 2 and a 1. And then if that doesn't work, we'll do a 1 and a 2. All right, positive. 
So they multiply to be positive, so they're both positive or both negative, and they add to be negative, so they're both negative. All right, I'm going to test this out. 3x times 1 is, or negative 1 is negative 3x, minus 2x is negative 5x. So this is the correct factoring. I did get lucky. So we're using the zero product property. which means when you have a product equaling zero, if a times b equals zero, then a is zero or b is zero. So three x minus two is zero or x minus one is zero. So x minus one is zero means x is one. Three x minus two is zero. That means three x add two to both sides. Three x is two x is two-thirds. All right, so two-thirds and zero. We're, these are x-intercepts. We got two-thirds and, oops, two-thirds and one. Not two-thirds and zero, two-thirds and one. All right, these are two different x-intercepts, and they want them as points. So remember, our y-coordinate was zero, so one of them was one x and a zero for y. That was this. The other one is two-thirds for x, zero for y. So there is our two x-intercepts. All right, uh, it looks like I need a comma in between. I assume I'll probably need a comma in between on the next part. So we're about to do vertical asymptotes. It's gonna feel similar, but our vertical asymptotes live in the denominator. Our x-intercepts lived in the numerator. So now we're going to look in the denominator right here, which is 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So set denominator equal to 0. And that was 2x squared minus 7x plus three. I'm gonna try to factor. So again, we have a quadratic and good news, it's already equaling zero. So we don't need to do any setup algebra for this. X squared coefficient again is prime. So it's gonna factor nicely. It's gonna factor like this. Uh, and again, I know this because two X times X is two X squared. All right, we need to multiply and make positive three. So it's either three and one or one and three. And if we look, they both need to be negative. Why is that? Well, they're either both positive or both negative, so the product is positive, but I know they're both negative because when you add them, you need to get negative seven. So we'll go negative three, negative one. And then we'll test it. And if this doesn't work, we'll try uh, negative 1, negative 3. All right. Inside, outside is what we're checking. Negative 3x minus negative 3x minus 2x is negative 5x. But we were hoping for negative 7x. So this is not correct. So we're going to swap... Okay, I guess we're not going to swap anything. One note is frozen. All right. Pardon the interruption. So we're going to swap those two numbers. Somewhere. Here we are. Okay, swap those two numbers eventually. All right, so we have negative uh, 6x, the outside's negative 6x, the inside's negative 1x, which is negative 7x, and that is what we we're looking for. So we have a winner. All right, this product equals zero, so that means 2x minus one is zero, or x minus 3 is 0. If x minus 3 is 0, x is 3. 
and 2x minus 1 is 0, that means 2x equals positive 1, x is 1 half. All right. These are the answers. Let's make sure they're in the right form. What are vertical asymptotes? Vertical asymptotes, if you were to graph, they are not points. Uh, one of them is really close to the x-axis, positive 1 half. They're vertical lines. We usually graph them as dotted lines. So there would be the x equals 1 half, and then the 3 would be somewhere over here. They are vertical lines, and their equation is x equals 1 half and x equals 3. That is the equation of those two vertical lines. Oh, and we already have, I'm going to be careful, we already have the x equals here. So we're just going to go with 1 half comma 3. Not the x equals 1 half and the x equals 3. We'll find out in one second. There we go. Okay. We're going to hunt for the horizontal asymptote next, and it's going to be completely different than everything else we've done in this problem so far. So this is also known as end behavior. Three x squared minus five x plus two. divided by 2x squared, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. All right, this is called f of x, I believe. They gave it a name. Yes, they called it f of x. But I'm about to destroy this function, so I don't want to call it the same thing because of what I'm about to do to this thing. So I'm just going to just say y equals. What I'm about to do is not algebra. This is the way a physicist method of finding end behavior. End behavior is what happens when x is really big. Negative infinity is left end behavior, positive infinity is right end behavior. Let's let's look for positive end behavior. Now when x is really big, like a million, x squared is so much more powerful than x that it turns out the x term doesn't matter. And in when, I, when x is a million, and the plus 2 matters even less. So the plus 2 doesn't matter either. So we're only keeping the highest power term in the numerator and only keeping the highest power term in the denominator. So again, x to the first term is going away and the constant term is disappearing. We did not do algebra right there. It's very important. All right, you can't just cross out terms and say that you're doing algebra, but it's okay. We're not doing algebra. We're finding end behavior, and we're thinking about when x is huge, and the small terms don't matter. So y equals 3x squared over 2x squared. Now we can reduce with algebra. So the x squareds cancel, and y equals 3 halves. All right, this means when x is really big, y is 3 halves. So if you were to graph this out, when x is really big, meaning when we're way over on the right, y is 3 halves. So that will be 3 halves. We have a horizontal asymptote. And the function either approaches it from above or the function approaches from below. But either way, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 halves. And they already have the y equals, so just put in the 3 halves. Now, <clears throat> the reason this is just a number and a horizontal asymptote is because the leading powers are both square, so it's a tie, which means the end behavior is going to act like the ratio or the fraction of the coefficients. So it'll act like y equals 3 halves. And that's why we get y equals 3 halves here. If we had a higher power in the top than 
this would either go to plus or minus infinity. And I don't want to cover all that here. But if we had a higher power in the bottom, then the denominator would win and this would go to zero. But full end behavior is for another lecture, not this one. Oh, and of course we need to show the answer. All right, there we go.